Hey, what's up everybody? Hey, this is Paul from Swarfworks. We got a new install video today on the 22 Raptor. So 21 and newer. And then also I changed this winch mount so it'll be backwards compatible with the 2015 and newer F-150s and also the second gen Raptors, so 17 to 20. So one thing I want to note is that you do need to change out the intercooler with a aftermarket one because the factory intercooler is right here. And so we need to move it up so we have room for the winch. Um, today I'm using a Cobb. Uh, they make a great one, full race. I've used them a lot. They're another good one. Um, SVC has one. So we're going to use the Warren Zeon Platinum winch, which I really like the Platinum because it has a remote controlled free spool clutch. You'll see there's no level, lever on here. So you can activate and deactivate the free spool clutch from the remote. Uh, you can use a standard winch. You're either going to have to line out the whole way or you're going to have to try to reach under there and get the clutch lever over the skid plate and it might be kind of awkward but I mean it's possible it's just not convenient. So the winch mount here when I ship it we we put this front plate on backwards just for shipping convenience so we'll take those three bolts out I'll cover that in a bit and then mount it on the front. So I'll get started I'll, I'll do the I'll just do a time lapse of the intercooler and then when we get down to the bumper, I'll cover that in a little more detail. So if you have any questions, um, one thing, I, I've got it on a lift, you can see, but that's just for, so I can get under there and get better video and pictures and stuff. I actually prefer to do this on the ground, um, especially when it goes to put the, when I go to put the winch in, I've got a technique that works pretty good. Um, so you can do it in your garage. You don't need a lift by any means. And I, if I wasn't shooting this video, I, I probably would, just do it right over here on the ground. So I just thought I'd mention that. If you have any questions, shoot me an email or leave a, a comment below. And uh, my email is paul at swarfworks.com. And let's get to it. All right, now that we got the intercooler swapped out, you can see we got tons of room here for the winch now. And let me go over the parts and pieces to the main mount. So like I said, this, this piece right here is installed backwards just for shipping. So we'll move that to the, to the front side um, with these bolts. And then these are what I call the fair lead shims. Those will go on um, after that. These two pieces here, half inch plate, they uh, shim the winch back away from the mount a little bit. Sometimes you, you run into a little um, issue with the, the way that this uh, frame horn face is stamped. So that just pulls the winch back a little bit. Uh, these two brackets with the three holes in them, they go behind here to hold the, uh, the Fairlead shims on and the Fairlead. Got a bunch of bolts and these two pieces here are for the tow hooks. So they'll replace the factory tow hook thing. And now on the, on the 15 to 20 F-150s, there'll be another bracket that'll come with it. Um, that'll replace the, the cheap plastic bumper holder thing. And then on this one, we're doing my favorite, the Factor 55 Ultra Hook. And also he's got a rope guard for it. So we'll put those on. But let me swap this out and then we'll get it up in place and go from there. All right, so now that I got this swapped around like it's supposed to be, um, we can go ahead and mount on the truck. One more thing I forgot, there's four bolts in here that are uh, 10 millimeter, uh, I believe it's a 15 millimeter head. These are new bolts for the winch itself. Since we're going through this half inch plate, you need longer bolts. So now we can get it up on the truck. Usually I like to, to drop the tow hook pieces on there. And then uh, these come with the nuts installed. Well, pull those nuts back off. Those are what, what we'll use for the tow hook. So let's keep going. So I forgot to mention, take off the tow hooks first. So I don't know if you can see here, but this is the nut retainer thing that is up on the frame. And this is what my piece will replace that. So this will go drop through the frame like that. So I just like to set those in place 
not don't drop them down through the holes just set them there so they'll be ready So now that those are dropped through, we can mount the tow hook on there. Just snug it up a little bit. We don't have to tighten it all the way up. All right. So now we got the mount in place. Uh, just have it kind of snugged up with the tow hook bolts. Um, let me talk about the winch for a second. So uh, sorry if it's, if I'm sweating here, it's like 104 degrees today and I got the fan off anyway. So with the winch, normally you'd be sitting like this on the front of a Jeep. You want the line coming off the bottom, right? So well, on these trucks, I had to lay it down flat. So this isn't sticking up into the radiator. So you can't like, if I mounted it like this, now the problem is, um, the line would be coming off, still off the bottom around here. So we need it to, we need the line to be up higher. So what I do is what we'll do is we'll, we'll tip it down back like this and then we'll flip it over end for end. So if, if the line was on here, maybe I'll show the video from my other one I did, but this would be the back side, the radiator side of like say on the front of a Jeep. So the line would be coming around the top side here and it would be exiting the bottom of the winch, right? So what we do, if that line's coming around going out the bottom, what we do is we just exit it 90 degrees before that. So it'll come off the drum on the top side of the drum, go right out the fair lane. So in still in, out still out, it, it doesn't make a difference there. And I talked to Warren, they said it's fine to do because they're, they're greased gearboxes. So that's how it runs. If I had the line on here, it'd make a little more sense, like I said, but so this is how it goes in the truck. So it'll mount feet forward, which is the best because now your bolts are only just holding it in the truck. On the front of a Jeep, it's trying to basically shear those bolts or pull the bolts out at an angle. So anyway, um, let me drop the truck down on the ground so I can show you how I do this on the floor. These things are kind of heavy, so um, I finally got a little technique for it. All right, so to get the winch up in there, take the four nuts, that uh, flanged nuts that come with the winch, slide them in the spots here in the winch. I put a little masking tape on there because they will fall out at the worst possible time. So what you do is get the winch up there. This spacer is gonna go on that side, and then the winch mount and this bolt. So what I like to do is just kind of hang it by the bottom one. You'll see here. So now we'll tighten the winch up. I like to push it up as high as it'll go to start with. Just kind of watch out that it doesn't hit the blow off valve or anything back there. All right, now we can remove the masking tape to hold the, hold the nuts in there. It's also probably a good time to remember to put these on. I swear every time I do it, I forget until after the bumper's on which you can do, but then it's a pain in the butt. All right, so one of the cool features about the Xeon winch too is that it has two auxiliary outputs. And so I just take a little Baja Designs rock light and solder on this two pin connector. Um, 
I sell these or you can do it yourself. But this plugs into the auxiliary port and then this little rock light, I mount back behind this so it lights up the drum. It's super handy so you can turn it on. I use it in the middle of the daytime because this is hidden. It's really hard to see how it's spooling on there. So I'm gonna go install, this customer wanted this, so I'm going to go install this. All right, so now we'll just wanna make sure we route that wire right. Don't go right through there because it'll get tied up with the drum. All right, so now that we got the winch mount on there, let me show you the, the fair lead spacers here. So there's one of them that has countersunk holes in it. Hopefully you can see that. That'll be the last one to go on. So we'll take these 516s countersunk, countersunk head bolts, put them through here, and then this threaded insert will go behind there. So I'm gonna start this truck, I'm gonna start with it on the top hole, see how that lines up. If you need to adjust a little bit, you can use one of the other ones. So what we can do here when this is still just a little bit loose, I'm just gonna go and thread these 7 16 ones, just start them in there when we tighten these down, that way we know they'll be easy to put back in there once we get the bumper on. Now we can take those out, finish tightening them down, and then we'll be ready for the bumper. All right, so on this bumper, this one had the front license plate on it. So we gotta take that off the mount. So this has some rivets on it. We'll have to drill those out, pop these two outer pieces out, and then we can remove that. All right, so once you get the bumper in place, I like to do a quick check uh, just make sure there's no wires being pinched or everything's lined up good. All right, so the bumper's on there. I got just two nuts holding it in place, snugged up. Just want to check my spacing here, make sure I'm about centered up and down. Looks good. Now, um, as you can see, I already pulled off the front uh, grill pieces. The 15 to 20s have one piece, or the 17 to 20s on the Raptors. The F-150s as well, but the 20, this is a 21 and newer Raptor. It has a center piece that you have to take off these outer pieces first, you pop that piece off, and then you can get to pop this piece off. So now, all right, so for the bumper grill, what I'd like to do is take your clips off and then line this up to where it goes. Make sure you got it going the right way here. This one actually has the block heater, so that's why that's out there. So line that up to where it would go in and just do, you can cut through this with a pair of dikes. So now we can put the Fairlead on. The uh, one that comes with the Xeon, it's pretty beefy, nice, nice Fairlead, or you can do the Factory 55 that's got the hard coat anodizing on it. Um, this, this customer 
just wanted the factory or the factory original worn one. So I'll get that tightened up and then we'll put the line on it. All right, so now it's time to put the line on. One thing you want to do is remember to put the black sleeve for the rock protector thing on the end of the line first. I put the wire through there. I wish I could show you this better, but so just put this black sleeve over and then we'll run it through the fair lead over the top of the drum now. And sometimes you might have to rotate the winch. Yeah. Um, or I mean, spin the spool a little bit with the remote. I don't have it hooked up yet, so just put that through there. Ready to pull. So this little wedge has to go in there. Let me grab my pliers. All right, so now the line's installed. When we go to tension it up, obviously we want to pull it all the way out, which will drive that wedge further back in the, in the drum. So now, basically all we have to do is connect the power. All right, so now we got the wires run up here. Easy enough to just connect them. All right, so now that we got the line in, it's hooked up to power, we can feed this in here. And then we'll go outside and tension it up. And also, let's go turn on the drum light. I'm not sure you can see that, but. Now, save the best for last. This is uh, the Factor 55 Ultra Hook. Just pop that titanium pin out of there with the C clip. And there you go. All right, so that wraps up the install on this. Um, I'll try to write up instructions here soon and post those in the description below. So if you have any questions or anything else you want to see, just let me know. Shoot me an email or message me here on YouTube or whatever. So thanks for watching. Um, once again, oh yeah, don't forget to put the skid plate back on. All right, so one thing I forgot to mention when I was doing the video for the Raptor installation this morning is the light mounts on this. So there's a slot here on the side that you can see where you can take um, I've got a uh, Baja Designs S1 here or an S2. Not sure if the squadrons will fit. It kind of depends on the truck. It looks like this Tremor should fit, but I can't guarantee that right now. I'll try to test it, but like these little S1s um, just go right here on this like this and then uh, be behind the plastic grill. So anyway, thought I'd mention that and uh, I forgot that this morning, so thanks, thanks again. So we have the Wayne, Min Wayne Minch Mount. Um, 
So the way, freaking A.